that uh, the, the bodies that's in there, they can't get to them, you know, because of, you know, uh, explosive devices. And, and uh, to be honest with you, I, I really, I mean, it's like a dream. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're trying to wake up. I mean, you know, I wish I could wake up. I mean, things are not looking good at all, you, you know, for no one. I'm sorry, do you have a son, daughter? In yeah, I have a son that's, uh, we don't know where he is. What's his name? It's Isaiah Shows. Yeah. Common spelling of Isaiah. Uh, yeah, Isaiah, yes. Uh -huh. What year is he? Uh, he's getting ready to graduate. He's getting ready to graduate. And it's not looking good at all. So I just wish everybody would pray for the family, you know. Have you heard the reports that they targeted minorities? Uh, well, that's I, yeah, I have. That's what I heard. And, you know, and I heard that, uh, you know, through the, it's not per se, they heard that they say that, uh, it's Hitler's birthday, and everybody better watch out. And then, you know, this happens, so. I don't know, and I mean, you know, it's not looking good for me at all, because my son is very tight-knitted with the family. And if he was, if he could call, he would call. Do you have a picture of him? Uh, no, I don't, not at all. No, I don't. Would you please spell Isaiah for me? It's I-S-A-I-H. Yep. And that is uh, Michael Scholes again telling us about his son Isaiah, who was a senior at Columbine High School. Uh, he says that uh, he's not on any of the hospital lists. He said uh, the next thing they're going to do now is they're not going to wait around tonight uh, for any more information. They're going to go home and wait there. And they're planning on calling all of uh, Isaiah's friends, any of his acquaintances that they can think of, uh, just hoping that uh, maybe he got in touch with them and, and hoping that the news is not what they think it is. Oh, that is so heartbreaking to, to listen to that father, Pat. And it re reminds me of uh, something that was on the wire earlier of a young girl, a student at Columbine, telling what she had seen, that a student was shot simply because he was black. And so... Yeah, it's, it's obviously a very difficult situation. And again, for this family, it's a matter of not knowing, but fearing the worst. They are hoping for the best, but uh, they may indeed actually be expecting the worst. All right, thank you very much, Pat Woodard. Uh, father of Isaiah shows uh, most certainly hoping for a call from his son at the 11th hour, but uh, as he said, uh, things are not looking very good for him. Isaiah, as he said, getting ready to graduate this year. He was a senior. Unfortunately, in the next couple of days, we will have to be bringing you more stories uh, of this like. So many young, young people, their lives cut short. Let's go back out now to Mitch. Now, Bertha and Shauna, I just got a, heard a story of a family whose uh, daughter goes to school here, one of the 2,000 that go to Columbine High School, and uh, their daughter went to lunch today and went off campus, and that's the only reason she wasn't here during this whole thing. And I, There are going to be so many stories like that in the days to come of people who are either the right place or the wrong place when something like this, this uh, you know, senseless act of violence, uh, it, it just keeps... You, you keep asking yourself why and you know and what was the what could possibly have been the purpose by by uh, anything even remotely like this uh, it's just it's it's unbelievable I, I know right now the police are um, uh, still working behind uh, behind us here a couple blocks away uh, as we mentioned the SWAT teams are moving through uh, the school if you're just getting home and just joining us uh, one of the things that they've been having to cope with today is the fact that the two suspects the two gunmen uh, whose bodies are inside, uh, apparently a self-inflicted gunshot wounds. They had left some booby traps, explosives, uh, in and around the school and either on themselves or near their bodies where they were found inside the school. And that is keeping the investigators from actually getting inside and doing their job and piecing this together. Now you see the suspects, Eric Harris and Dylan uh, Kebold. That is keeping the investigators from getting inside and beginning their work. The SWAT teams are still having to move through this rather large campus and try to clear the area and make sure there are no other booby traps. Uh, a couple of them, we understand from police, may have even had timers on them, uh, so they would have gone off uh, at or near the, the, the same time. That's what it would explain some of the explosions that the students said they heard today. At first, police thought, well, maybe that was just gunshots echoing in the uh, tiled hallways of the school and it couldn't have been explosions. Well, it turns out that there were some. We talked to a doctor earlier today that was in the ER in Swedish Medical Center, and he said that one of the victims we'd heard about early today, we reported this uh, around the noon hour, that had come in with presumably about eight gunshot wounds in the chest area. That turned out to be shrapnel presumably then from one of these uh, items exploding or from some of the uh, pieces in the school there uh, that had, had uh, 
ricocheted off uh, because so there's so much damage given the explosions and the gunshots. So that's the latest from the scene. Bertha? All right. All right. Thank you very much, Mitch uh, Jelnicker, reporting live from out of Columbine. Uh, we do have crews uh, throughout the metro area, one of those crews being uh, one of those reporters, 7 News reporter Lance Hernandez. He is standing by for us, Lance, at the memorial service still at Light of the World. Yes, that memorial service just ended a few moments ago, and with me are some students from Columbine High School who attended that memorial service. We're going to speak with just a few of them. Can I ask your name, sir? Yeah, it's B.J. Secord. Were you in school today? Yes, I was. All right, why was it important for you to be at the service tonight? Just to kind of, like, set in and with all your friends and just realize what happened, because I, I still can't believe it happened in our school. I mean, it was just a complete shock. I don't understand how it happened or why it happened. It's going to take a long time to deal with. Can I ask your name, sir? Tyson Kanapke. Were you in school when this happened? Yes. What, what did you see? What did you hear? I just heard, like, gunshots and that's it and stuff like that. Just... You know you've lost some classmates or possibly even friends in that? Yes. Your thoughts about attending the service tonight? Just to be with friends, like you said, and just... I never thought that this stuff would happen to Columbine. Never thought any of this stuff would happen. Good enough. Your name, sir? I'm Dan Moorbacher. Okay, you were in school for quite a few hours. Yeah, I was in for the whole time in Please. the science room. Did you hear or see anything? I heard gunshots in the room next to me. Got a bullet hole in it, so I was scared. Your mom, your mom and dad, your parents must have been worried. Yeah, they were really scared and happy to see me. And it was important for you to come here tonight, too? Yeah, I just wanted to help pray for the people who are still wounded and help out with, I don't know, just know everything that was, I um, can't believe it. Your name, sir? Chad Crandall. All right. And tell me, what was the service like? Well, it was just like people talking and trying to help us get through this just to like feel better and because we don't really know how to deal with it and we haven't really realized how bad it is yet. So I, we... I spoke with a number of students who said that it really hasn't sunk in yet. I mean, I don't know if they're going to have school tomorrow. I can't imagine that they will, but can you imagine going back to that school and, 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 and attending classes there knowing that that mass shooting happened there? I can't imagine. It would be hard to go back just thinking about what went on in there. Are, are students trying to help each other here tonight outside of the memorial service? Yeah. Like all of us, we're going over to a friend's house just to hang out and just think about what happened today. I appreciate your time, you guys. Thank you. Uh, over here at Light of the World Catholic Church, a memorial service has just ended. A number of students from Columbine High School were here, as well as students from other Jefferson County public schools. Staff members, we spoke with one kindergarten teacher. She was at one of the elementary schools where some of those students from the high school were evacuated and where parents were told to go pick them up. She said they had to calm the kindergartners down today and to try to just get their minds off what was going on when they saw all the commotion, uh, all the flashing lights outside, and as well as the news media presence. So it's not just the students at Columbine High School that have to deal with this, but an entire community. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Lance. And also, just to let you know, Lance, Jefferson County Schools has told us they will not be having uh, classes tomorrow for K through 12. Once again, Jefferson County School officials have told us they will not be having classes for students K through 12. Obviously, there's a lot of grief counseling that needs to go on. Police obviously still need to, to stay within Columbine High School and do the work they need to do. So there's a lot that needs to be done and uh, classes off tomorrow for Jefferson County Schools. You know, it's been a, almost a year since the, the last school violence incident. And uh, since that time, schools around the country, districts around the country have taken some steps to try to prevent this sort of thing from happening in their locales. Metal detectors and surveillance cameras have gone up in hallways. What used to be considered an idle threat now is passed to the principal's office and then to the police station. Special events such as proms and graduations have been postponed based on reports that have been made by students, things that they've seen or heard. So there has, there's a lot of fallout from the uh, school violence that started in October of 97. There have been a number of incidents, the most recent one being May 21st in Springfield, Oregon, and now we have this incident at Columbine High School. We certainly do, and we've mentioned it time and time again, this is community wild community-wide, excuse me. Tom Green joins us right now. This has even uh, touched the sports community, has it not? Sure, at about this time, we were supposed to have uh, 50, 60,000 people mm -hmm. out at Coors Field and at McNichols Arena for basketball and baseball tonight. Of course, as, we, as we've been telling you for quite some time, the Rocky 6 o'clock game with the Montreal Expos postponed. That'll be made up in August. The Nuggets 7 o'clock game with the Portland Trailblazers has been postponed.
postponed. No make date scheduled for that one yet. The Avalanche have been talking to the National Hockey League. They will not have a decision on tomorrow's Game 1 of the Stanley Cup playoffs until sometime tomorrow. Now, if you've never been uh, behind the scenes at a sporting event, players arrive very early, get into their locker rooms and clubhouses, and they hang around, they get taped and all, but they watch television, and uh, it had quite an impact today in the clubhouses and locker rooms of both the Portland Trailblazers, the Denver Nuggets, also the Montreal Expos, and the Colorado Rockies. As a matter of fact, uh, Shane Andrews, the Expos' third baseman, when he found out uh, that the game was postponed, said, quote, I couldn't have played. I had a hard time just being on the field. Thinking about it makes me sick. And Jerry McMorris said it was very simple for him. It is not right for us to play. Our players don't want to play, and nobody in the organization wants to play. Our hearts and prayers go out to the family. I had a chance to speak with Dan Issel this afternoon as the situation was evolving. He has a friend with two children who go to Columbine High School, and as of 3.30, he had heard, uh, Dan Issel's friend had heard from one of his children, but hadn't heard from the other. And uh, Dan says, I don't even know what you can say. And it's obviously uh, very clear that what uh, has happened today at Columbine High School, uh, you know, by postponing games are rather insignificant, but the impact it has uh, on players and people in these organizations, very similar to the impact it has on everyone in this community, very strong. Now, what time tomorrow might we hear about the Avs' uh, intentions for the playoff game tomorrow? I'm sure it'll be a, a very early decision, obviously, to, uh, operating to some extent on New York time, so yeah. I would say it'd uh, be before breakfast, you know, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, they'll have a determination on whether or not they're going to play hockey tomorrow night uh, at Big Mac. It's an 8 o'clock start tomorrow night. We'll, of course, have that information for everybody. Yep. Certainly, the professional leagues are impacted by this, Tom, and, and it's not just impacting our community. There are reverberations and you were telling us about the reaction, the frantic reaction in Springfield, Oregon. At Thurston High School in Springfield, exactly. Oregon. That's where the incident was last May. And now we're hearing about uh, reaction from Jonesboro, Arkansas, another notorious uh, shooting there on March 24th of last year. The deadly school shootings here in Colorado brought back some disturbing memories today for Arkansans who lost relatives and friends in last year's school shooting in Jonesboro. Uh, quoting somebody, you just instantly think back to what happened in your own life last year and you feel for the families and what they are about to go through. So imagine these people now a year removed from their own tragedies, just beginning probably to heal a little bit about their painful losses and now to have this all brought up again and dredged up. I'm, I'm certain they are getting flashbacks and that is something that the, the, the grief counselors here have to worry about because this is not something that's going to go away in the next day or the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months. We are talking about a lifetime process for all of this, uh, this grief to find the it, its way out of our systems. We're going to go live now to uh, Mitch Jelnicker, who's out at Columbine High School right now. Mitch, what's the latest out there? We hope to get another update from police in about uh, six or seven minutes here, and it will allow me to peer over my shoulder, and I'm trying to seek out the, the main person, and they still seem to be talking over there with the uh, at the command post. We should get some more information. They're promising, promising us uh, an update at the bottom of each hour, so the next one should be at approximately 8.30. That would be from Steve Davis. Uh, from the Jefferson County uh, Police Department, or Jefferson County uh, uh, Police and uh, Public Information Office, um, to give us the latest of what's going on. We hope to glean from them whether or not the SWAT team has uh, finished its uh, sweep, uh, one of many, uh, through the school trying to find some of those explosive devices and, and uh, get rid of those so the investigators can then move in uh, as uh, would be also the coroners would also move in and be able to do some of their work uh, uh, tonight. The two suspects, the bodies uh, are still inside because as we mentioned earlier, uh, the SWAT team has relayed out to a uh, police outside that uh, there are either uh, explosive devices on the bodies of Eric Harris and uh, Dylan Kebold, the suspects in this case, or they're very close to them and they may in fact be booby trapped. There have been some other booby traps found in the school and <clears throat> uh, knapsacks or lockers or in uh, at various places. Also in each one of the suspects cars are cars who believe to be those of the suspects and also some explosive uh, making materials if not devices uh, at the suspects homes which they found as they were executing some uh, uh, search warrants this afternoon. So. Uh, we hope to get an update in the next few minutes about what goes on here uh, and what the next phase of the process. But again, you, you can see over my shoulder all the lights in place. Again, a clear indication that this is a command post that won't be taken down any time tonight and maybe perhaps not for the next couple of days. So this is here on Pierce. Uh, you're essentially looking south uh, down that way near Bowles. And I still don't see any traffic here at Bowles at Pierce. And that would be oh roughly about six blocks or so east of Wadsworth to give you an idea where we are or Columbine High School is. I have also talked to a few people that have, have walked by although most of the citizens have gone back to their homes I think to be with one another 
uh, that even are people that are just even near this area or in the next county have even had some of their students and their schools uh, being locked down today. I know I checked on my kids uh, from our school and, uh, and I've talked to several uh, friends and they said that at their school, their kids, regardless of kindergarten or high school or junior high, wherever they are, their schools too, although not having any involvement in this, just to be safe, were locked down today until we understood fully what we had on our hands here. And of course, police are still trying to piece that together because um, Again, I, it just, it's, it's unbelievable why anybody would even think of doing anything even remotely like this. So we lots of things to be answered. We are all asking those questions. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, we do have some information we'd like to pass along to everybody. Let's put up a, a, a map of the Jefferson County um, School, at Columbine High School, if we can, to, to show you exactly where this all took place. As you are looking at this map, we do need to tell you that Jefferson County School District officials have just called us. Uh, earlier in the day, they had said they had canceled all of classes for all of Jefferson County schools for tomorrow. They have now since changed their minds. They say that tomorrow only classes at Columbine High School will be canceled. Once again, earlier they said that all classes throughout Jefferson County schools will be canceled. They have just called us and said they want to change that to only cancellation of classes at Columbine High School. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sean. We also want to just... Uh go back to this issue of Hitler's birthday. 7 News has confirmed April 20th, 1889 was the date that Adolf Hitler was born. This would have been his 110th birthday and that has come up in the discussions of uh, the investigation of this case as to possible motive. We are not sure but we wanted to uh, let you know that that birth date was April 20th, 1889. Let's go back out now to Lance Hernandez who is standing by at Light of the World Church. Lance? This is where they had a huge church service a little bit earlier this evening. We were told there were upwards of 1,500 to 2,000 people. It is over. We've talked to a number of the students who have left, many of them still hurting. With me right now is Dr. Harriet Hall. She is the CEO of the Jefferson Center for Mental Health. And Dr. Hall, there are gonna be a lot of people who need help. There certainly are. I think that, of course, all of the folks who were in the school um, are gonna need help, but the people who heard about it, who watched on TV, um, people who knew people there, there's a lot of hurting people in the metro area tonight. And how is this gonna manifest itself in different ways? I think there's all kinds of ways that stress, which is what people have been through, um, manifests itself. Um, people shouldn't be surprised if they can't sleep tonight, if they have nightmares. One of the most important things for them to do is talk. Um, if people seem to need to talk about it over and over and over, that's fine. That's what you should encourage. Worry more if people aren't talking, if they become withdrawn. And if you can't get them to talk to you, why folks ought to be talking to them um, and talking about how they're feeling as well as what they've been through. And different people process this stuff different ways. That's very true. Some people will pull into themselves and some people will need to talk um, about it. Some people will have very serious symptoms that will be very obvious and some people will really hide it. The folks who went through this um, the most are really going to need to talk to somebody tomorrow. Um, we will be doing counseling here at the church um, that people can come to all day tomorrow. Um, which is a very important time. Folks may be deciding, well, you know, that was yesterday and I'm going to tough it out, but um, the day after is a really very vital time for people to talk, for people to get counseling and to get help. Briefly tell people what Jefferson Center is. Jefferson Center is a private not-for-profit um, community mental health center. It's the community mental health center that serves Jefferson, Gilpin, and Clear Creek counties. We have a number of different facilities um, all over the area, including one about a mile from here close to Southwest Plaza. Okay, and you just mentioned a minute ago that you're going to be here at this church, Light of the World Catholic Church, uh, helping anybody that needs help tomorrow. So they don't have to worry. Is this a, a, a free service tomorrow? This is a free service tomorrow. People can show up. They can come in. They can also come to our offices and we'll mobilize to help people there also if that's more convenient. I think there will be people who don't even live in this area who watch this, people who know people here who are going to need some help, and they can call us. Our phone number is 425-0300 for folks who need to call. And for people who have never been through this before, how can they emote? What, if, if, if they just want to kind of break the ice and say, I don't know what to say, but I just need help? Well, a hug is a really good thing. Um, just saying, how are you feeling? or just starting to talk about how somebody else is feeling. Um, all of those things will help to break the ice and get somebody going. Because okay. talking about it is really the important thing. And the hours tomorrow? The hours tomorrow are 9 to 1 and um, 12 to 4. 
um, there'll be different groups here and three to nine so there'll be three different um, three different sessions if people show up other times than those hours um, there'll be somebody here to help them get what they need All right this isn't necessarily one-on-one -on -one counseling then it's it's more of a, a group session this will be groups of people right if somebody needs one-on-one -on -one counseling why they can get that but one of the things that we found is that after um, an incident of stress like this particularly an, an incident of stress that's involved other people the support that people get from other people the fact of being in a group hearing what other people are to have to say that's often what it takes to get people talking and to get people in touch with how they're feeling. Um, they generally first need to talk about what they've been through um, before they can get to talking about the feelings and hearing somebody else talk about that things often helps other folks to get in touch with what they need to also. I thank you Dr. Hall again. If you need those services tomorrow they'll be available here at Light of the World Catholic Church starting at 9 in the morning uh, through about 9 in the evening different sessions. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Lance, and our thanks to Dr. Hall. That was wonderful information about how to break through to some of those students who have been traumatized by what happened today out at Columbine. We're going to check in again with 7 News anchor Mitch Jelnicker, as we have been doing throughout the day. He's standing by live near Columbine High School. Mitch, I understand you have some uh, interviews out there. I do indeed, Sean. I'm standing here with uh, Nathan and Stephanie, and they uh, are go to nearby Bear Creek High School. They don't go to the Columbine High, but you knew some folks that uh, go to school here. Is that right? right? My two best friends go here. So, and I didn't talk to him for a while today, and I was kind of going crazy, and I finally talked to him, and I've been crying all day, and I got a hold of one of them, and I cried with her, and she's, well, they're both going through a really hard time, and I just want to be here for him, and that's why we're starting the memorial, and he has the card to read. Yeah, and so, Nathan, you brought some flowers and whatnot to bring to this, this site? Yes. Try and make all the families and friends feel a little bit better. I mean, you can't feel much better after what happened today, but... Um, in a little note I wrote, it says, These flowers are given to those whose lives ended today. One tulip for each of the 23 who died, and the bouquet for the families and the injured and the friends of the lost. Good wishes. We love you all, the Bakeisens. Well, we thank you for, for doing that. And, and did, you, did you leave those in any particular spot here, leave them here at the park? We're going to leave them, I where guess, up here on the hill, wherever we can. So if people want to add to it, please feel free. Okay. Well, we thank you all for coming out. And tell me, in your school today, was it locked down for a while? Yeah, it was locked down. Um, they wouldn't let anyone leave, and they wouldn't tell us what was going on for a while. And then we were watching TV all day, and the only way we could leave was if our parents came and got us, and we'd have to leave our cars there. So I left at about 2 o'clock and um, tried to get a hold of my friends, and I didn't get a hold of one of them until about 6 o'clock, and I still haven't talked to the other one. But... He's okay. And the one you did speak with, did they hear or see anything? How did they describe the no, scene? She said that she had gone to lunch. They were walking down to the cafeteria, and they turned around and said, well, let's go out to lunch today. And they went out to lunch, and she came back, and I guess all the police officers had arrived, and she got her sister, and they left. And she said she's been glued to the news for, like, seven hours. So... Okay. Well, we thank you all for joining us and uh, for bringing the flowers. I know that'll mean a lot to the folks out there. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Nathan and Stephanie, again, a couple of students from um, Bear Creek High School, not far from here. Uh, they did not attend here, but knew a couple people that did and just felt the need, as so many people have today, to at least come by this area, and they were hoping to leave some flowers, although we're still a few blocks from the school itself, uh, for obvious reasons, for the police line around it. Uh, they still wanted to be near here and uh, just leave something uh, for the families and for the neighborhood and for the students and the teachers that attend here. Mitch, this is affecting a lot of people. You could, you could really hear the emotion in their voices. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, it, you know it's, <laughs> it's hard. Uh, I mean, this is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, you watch on the news and may happen someplace else. It usually doesn't happen in your backyard. It doesn't happen in your town, uh, your metro area. And you think of Littleton. I mean, President Clinton even said that today. You know, he's been to Littleton. I mean, this is this is not what you would, if you had to make a list of places it might happen, you would hope it wouldn't happen anywhere. This wouldn't be among them. And so you never know. And I think it's that very element of not knowing that uh, it, this brings fear up in everybody's hearts, and regardless of where you live, because now all of a sudden that, uh, that security has been um, shaken a bit. Uh, the places you thought maybe were safe, a school, uh, a pleasant town like this, uh, a great state like this may, may, may not be the, the case. I'm looking over my shoulder here and I can see that uh, Steve Davis with the Jeffco uh, 
Police Department is stepping up to the microphone for our latest briefing. Let's see if we can punch over to that if we can. Again, that's Steve Davis. Um, right now, there's not a whole lot of update. Uh, the bomb teams are still working on explosive devices, and that's going to take some time for them to get those taken care of um, before the final SWAT team can go in. There have been very many sweeps by the SWAT teams, but it's my understanding that once the bomb teams have disabled everything that they think might be a device, there will be one last SWAT team sweep after that, where a bomb team member will go with each SWAT team through the building. And once that is completed, then the investigators can start their investigation. Uh, I spoke briefly with the coroner, and she advised me that right now they're trying to piece together some information. They're trying to match uh, kids who are unaccounted for uh, with what they were wearing and trying to speak to some parents and coordinate that information to hopefully identify some of the victims that are inside. Um, but the coroner has not been inside. None of the investigators have been inside at this point. Uh, we're still uh, standing by waiting for the uh, bomb team to tell us that it's safe for everybody to go in. Um, okay. uh, we'll take just a few questions. I really, like I said, I don't have much update at this time, but just a couple questions and then we'll... I, we do have the names. I'm just waiting for the, the okay to release those. How many, victim, how many victims are there inside uh, that have not been accounted for? How many? As, as far as their identification? Uh, that's unknown. Are? That's unknown. Uh, number, the, what is the latest count? Can we get a definitive count? Uh, the latest I've heard is at least 25 victims. It could, and, and I wouldn't be surprised uh, I hate to say 25 and be concrete on it because it may end up at 20 or 21, or it could be higher. Um, but there's no concrete number at this time. Steve, do we know how many of these were teachers? No, I don't know how many were students and how many were faculty. That's unknown right now. Haven't heard uh, a word at all except for here. Is there any motive? Have you come up with any motive yet for this? I haven't heard of any motive. I heard some. Uh, some speculation that the group was, uh, it, that it was in conjunction with uh, the birthday of Adolf Hitler. That was one of the, one of the uh, speculations that I heard. Which is April 20th. Yeah. Have you, you have a number? contact the parents of Of the victims? No, of the suspects. Of the suspects? Uh, I still don't know that we've contacted parents of the suspects. How long have you been floating, um, was it some of the students in the library I think where that came from is uh, some of the SWAT team members felt like it, at least they thought it looked like possibly some of the kids had crawled under desks to avoid what was going on and that maybe they were shot or hurt from the explosion, killed from the explosion while they were underneath desks or underneath tables or cubicles. So it's possible that some of the victims have died as a result of injuries that, that weren't shot? Correct. That's, that's correct. Uh, we, we feel like it was some type of pipe bomb explosion, at least one, if not more, inside the school. How many bombs There are at least two more outside in vehicles, and there are devices uh, with the suspects, either on their body or right next to their body. How many with the suspects, I'm not sure. Are the 